What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome or welcome back to the Lost and Found Dating channel. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for watching another video of ours. If this is your first time checking out the channel, we welcome you with arms fully open. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoy the video that you're about to see today. You can also check us out on a couple of our other platforms. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Twitter as well, where we show previews of videos, show you some behind the scenes footage as well. Without further ado, let's dive in to this week's topic. All right, folks, so we've got another nugget filled video for today. The topic of today's video is double binds, right? Double binds. That's B I N D S, double binds. Now, double binds or a double bind is something that I was actually introduced to or first heard about through. Uh, Richard Grannon's channel as he was talking about unhealthy abusive relationships and I remember when I first heard what it was it was kind of one of those aha moments for me where I started to realize that that sort of double bind that he was talking about that he was describing was something that was very prevalent in the unhealthy relationship that I was in so it was kind of one of those aha moments that I had and I started to realize that it's pretty common and something that a lot of people who are in unhealthy relationships um, are experiencing, something that they can relate to, something that they are feeling as well. So we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about what double binds are and we're gonna talk about how they are sometimes the hallmark of an unhealthy relationship. Now to give you all some historical context when it comes to uh, the idea of double binds. So the double bind theory was essentially a theory that was proposed by a gentleman named Gregory Bateson. And he proposed this theory as kind of an explanation or, or a, a root cause for uh, schizophrenia. And he described that people who are subjected to these double binds for prolonged periods of time start to develop these symptoms of uh, schizophrenia. So we're going to talk about double binds. We're going to talk about what they are. So essentially when you have a double bind, what you have are, are two conflicting injunctions, right? Two conflicting messages that often cancel each other out. Now that on, on the surface, that definition doesn't really give you a, a helpful sense of what it means. As always with this channel, I never like to just give a definition of something or just describe it in one sentence. I like to give examples to kind of really illustrate and really paint a picture of what a double bond looks like. So I'm going to use uh, the example of one of my past relationships to kind of help paint a picture and explain and, and really demonstrate what a double bind is and how it can be destructive and how it can be damaging psychologically. So let's imagine that you and I are dating partners, right? And let's, let's imagine that when I do something that upsets you or when I do something that bothers you, let's say you tend to have a, a habit of just kind of internalizing things and, and not really communicating what's upsetting you, not really communicating what's bothering you. Let's say you have a habit of just being kind of passive aggressive and, and doing the, the silent treatment thing, you know, not speaking with me or, or giving me negative body language. Let's say that's something that you tend to do when you get upset, right? So let's say I, I approach you 
and we have a conversation and I say, hey, look, you know, the, the silent treatment thing that you're doing, I don't really like it. I, I don't really appreciate that behavior. When you're upset with me, you know, I want you to, to be open and transparent with me. I want you to tell me when I've done or said something that upsets you, right? I, I want you to communicate and express how you're feeling when you're upset with me so that we can address it and, and so that we can move forward from it, right? So let's say that is the, the first injunction that I give you, right? And, and y y let's say your response is you go, well, you know, that that's, seems reasonable. You know, he's asking for healthy communication. He's asking to have a dialogue and for me to express how I'm feeling or express what I'm upset about so that we can talk about it and resolve the situation, right? So let's say you come to the, let's say you and I come to the agreement. When you're upset, you're going to take the, the initiative and communicate with me and tell me what it is that's bothering you. So now, let's say a week goes by and let's say we're, we're together, we're out on a date, and let's say I, I make a, a comment or I make a joke and you happen to, to find it offensive. You don't really like the joke that I make. You know, it, it, it kind of rubs you the wrong way and it bothers you. And let's say you say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm sure you didn't, didn't mean it, you know, harmfully, but I didn't really appreciate the joke that you, that you made. You know, it, it kind of upset me. It bothered me. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't really like that you did that, did that. And let's say my response, uh, let's say you've come to me and, and you've you know, expressed that you're upset, which is what we agreed on, right? Which is the agreement that we came to. Let's say my response is, look, you know what? Okay, I made a joke. It wasn't that big of a deal. You know, I, I don't even think it was that serious. I don't even understand why you would be upset about it. It wasn't that big of a deal. Obviously, I didn't mean to, you know, upset you. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. You know, I, I don't appreciate the fact that you think I'm the kind of person that would, you know, go out of their way to, to hurt your feelings or, or to say something hurtful. You know, I don't like that you would, that you would insinuate that of me. You know, why would you think that I would do that to you? You know, why would you think that I would try to hurt your feelings with a joke? You know what, you know, you know what, how about this? How about I'm not gonna make any jokes anymore since I can't make a joke without hurting your feelings. I'm not gonna make any jokes anymore and we just won't joke with each other, okay? How about that? How about moving forward, I'm not gonna make any jokes. What, what, would, your, what would your response be, right? On, on one hand, you would go, huh, well, you know, you told me to communicate with you when I'm upset. You told me to, to approach you about it, but now you're kind of criticizing me and making me feel like I did something wrong by doing what it is that you told me to do. You would be thinking, well, last time you told me to communicate when something was bothering me or you know, when you did something that I didn't like, but now you're criticizing me and, and punishing me for being honest with you and being open with you and telling you something that bothers me. That's a little weird. I'm a little confused, but okay, right? So, so whatever, things roll over. Now, let's say a couple of days goes by again, and let's say I do something else that bothers you, that irritates you, that disappoints you, and you decide, based on the past two experiences, you decide, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna put on a mask and act like I'm not bothered. I'm just gonna pretend that I'm okay and just let things kind of roll over. And I can kind of tell that, that something's a little off. I can kind of tell you're a little upset. So I go, hey, is, is, is something bothering you? You go, no, it's nothing. I go, and I go, well, I can tell that you're upset. I can tell that something's bothering you. You go, no, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. I'm fine. Then I respond to you and I go, look, 
I thought that, that we agreed. I thought that we came to the decision that you were going to tell me, you were going to communicate to me if something was bothering you, if, if I did something that upset you. And you go, look, okay, here's the deal. What you did or what you said, it, it did bother me. It, it did upset me. And then I, then I jump down your throat and I go, see, I told you you're, you were upset. I told you that you were upset. You lied to me. You told me that you weren't. I knew that you were upset. You agreed that you were going to tell me when something was bothering you. And now you're going back on that. You know what? You're, you're a horrible person. You're going back on what you said you were going to do. That upsets me. You know what? I don't, I don't even want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Now, some of you are watching this video, never having experienced that, that kind of exchange, never having experienced that kind of interaction going, does, does that really happen? Like, is, is that really a thing? Other people who have been in those kinds of scenarios, who have been in that, that sort of interaction where, you know, up is down and down is up and, and you don't know whether you're doing the right thing or whether you're doing the wrong thing or they're, they're giving you conflicting messages or conflicting signals. Others who have been in that situation watched that, that demo that I just gave and, and probably went, yeah, that, that kind of sounds like what parts of my relationship are like or what parts of my friendship with this person are like, right? Where, where, where is the, the double bind in that scenario, right? Where are the, the competing messages, right? On one hand, as your partner, I've given you the, the instruction to communicate to me, to be open, to be honest when something is bothering you, right? That's one message that I'm giving you. On the other hand, the, the sort of conflicting message that cancels that out is punishing you, is criticizing you, is not giving your experience or not giving what you're saying any value, right? It's, it's invalidating and negating what you're telling me you're feeling or denying what you're telling me you're feeling and, and just not allowing you to be open and be honest with you, not, not sort of respecting what you're telling me. The other injunction is if you confront me about something I do or say that bothers you, I will punish you for it. I will blame you for it, right? I will battle you, you know, tooth and nail and, and try to deny and invalidate what it is that you're telling me, what it is that you're saying you're feeling, right? I will criticize you for feeling what it is that you're feeling and criticize you and tell you how bad of a person you are for making me feel bad about how I made you feel, right? Do you see the, the sort of mixed messages and mixed signals there, right? On one hand, communicate, tell me about things, you know, we're on the same team. I will respect your opinion. I will be open. I will listen with open ears. The other is I will punish you, right? I will deny your experience. I will criticize you. I will blame you. I will make you feel like you're the bad person for feeling bad about something that I did or something that I said. This will leave you incredibly confused and I feel like confused is even an understatement. It's, it's, a, it's a sense of just feeling lost and feeling bewildered. Maybe that's a better word. You will feel totally bewildered because you will, you will experience that and you'll walk away from the situation thinking, wait, I thought I was the, the one who was upset, but I'm somehow the bad guy. Did, did I do something wrong? Right? I thought I was upset, but now I'm the one who's made to feel bad, right? So now you'll think that I thought maybe I was upset, but now I also feel guilty about making them feel bad about addressing their behavior. So I'm upset. I feel guilty, but now I also feel this resentment at myself for not standing up for myself and for not feeling assertive. So now you're feeling upset, you're feeling bewildered, you're feeling guilty, and 
you're feeling resentful towards yourself for not standing up for yourself and not standing up for what you know is right. My friends, this, that is not a healthy mental or emotional state to be in, right? Totally bewildered, not understanding. You know, I, I thought my feelings were valued. I thought my feelings were respected. I, I was told to be open and honest and transparent, but then I'm punished for doing so. And I walk away from the situation feeling guilty, right? Imagine if every time you confronted your partner about something that they did that made you feel disrespected, made you feel insulted, every time they invaded a personal boundary of yours. Imagine every time that happens, knowing that you're going to be made to feel like you did something wrong, right? So every time that you want to speak up, every time you want to raise your hand and say, hey, I don't like your behavior, I don't like what you're doing, I don't like the way that it makes me feel, you're hesitant to do so because you know that it's going to be sort of flipped and switched around on you and you're going to be the one who's made to feel bad and you're going to be the one sort of with the negative emotions walking away from the situation. Now, this is why if you look at, often if you look at stories of, of people who have been in emotionally abusive relationships, one of the one of the sort of commonalities, one of the patterns that you often hear people describe or people talk about is questioning their own reality, right? You'll hear people say, you know, I was in this relationship and I was uh, I was made to feel like uh, I was going crazy or, or I started to question my own sanity or question my own reality. And when you hear terms like question your own reality, it's, it's not in this sort of mystical sense of like, is the world real? Is, you know, are these books real? Is, is my apartment real? Is, is my car real or is it fake? It's not in terms of questioning literal and physical things and, and wondering if they're real or not. It's more in the, the context of questioning your own emotions, questioning your own feelings, questioning am I feeling the right emotion? Am I assessing the situation the right way? Did, you know, maybe, maybe I am overreacting. Maybe I'm having a dispropor disproportionate response to what they're doing. Maybe they are right. Maybe Maybe I'm the one who's, you know, the, the bad person. Maybe I'm the, the person who's being abusive, right? Maybe I'm, maybe I am making them feel bad. Maybe I am doing something wrong, right? So it's, it's a matter of you start to question and lose grip of what's actually happening, right? What the person's actually doing. Like I gave in the, in the scenario with the double bind, despite someone maybe insulting you or humiliating you or putting you down or doing something, that that harms and bruises your ego or doing something that invades your boundary you will start to question whether they actually did that or whether you're misperceiving things and you know maybe you're the one who's hurting them or maybe maybe you're overreacting or maybe you're misreading the situation right so often what you have with these kinds of double bonds one of the consequences is you start to lose sight of what is actually happening in in the relationship? Did I did did I really witness that? Maybe I'm misremembering things, and you start to it, it it puts you in a very vulnerable state where the person can just flat out lie and and say you know no I I never agreed to that or no we never came to this agreement and you start to really lose touch with your surroundings and what it is that's happening to you emotionally and psychologically. So again, double binds and, and conflicting messages that, that kind of cancel each other out, that's something that you should definitely look for uh, or, or be wary of when it comes to your relationship. And that may be a sign that you're dealing with, a, with an abusive or, or unhealthy kind of relationship is if you're given mixed instructions, right? If you if you feel like you can't get a grasp of the rules of the relationship, right? If, if, you're, if you feel like you're in a game or you're in a scenario where you think you have a grasp of the rules, but then the rules are changed,
based on the situation, right? The, and there's no, there's no sort of guidelines or, or policies that you feel like you can follow that will lead you towards success, right? You feel like every time you step foot, the, the rug is being pulled from underneath you and, and you feel like you, you get this, this feeling of, I can never do anything right. I can never seem to say anything right. I can never seem to uh, speak to the person the way that they want to be spoken to, or you know, I can never seem to get a, a grasp of how they want me to behave and how they want me to act. They're always changing the rules. They're always telling me that I did this wrong or I, or I handled this situation the wrong way. If you're starting to feel like nothing you do is right and you're always on eggshells with this person and you're not able to predict you know, the, how to act and how to behave in the relationship in order to achieve success, that's a pretty good sign and a pretty good indicator that you are in a double bind and that you're not dealing with someone who is who is direct and who is not manipulative. You're not dealing with someone who has your best interest in mind. You're not dealing with someone who's looking for a a win-win, mutually fulfilling, you know, horizontal style of relationship, right? It's it's a possible indicator that you're dealing with someone who is abusive, who at whatever opportunity they can will change the rules up or will change the guidelines of the game, change the guidelines and the rules of the relationship in order to better satisfy their needs whilst getting you to forfeit your own needs, desires, boundaries, and interests. So hope that that gave you all some insight into what a double bind is, how to identify double binds in your relationships um, and hope that you got some good value from this video. Hope that you were able to appreciate some of the nuggets that we dropped in this video. If you did enjoy the video, click that thumbs up button, click the like button, leave a comment down below, share your thoughts, your feedback, some of your experiences as well. We'd love to hear about it. And of course, Definitely, we encourage you to subscribe to the channel. That way, you'll be the first to know the very first when we come out with new content each and every week. You'll see that thumbnail with me appearing on your screen like this. And you'll know that that man and his team are dropping some nuggets and are helping you guide your way towards happy, successful, healthy, mutually fulfilling relationships. So thanks for tuning into the video. Catch you all next time. Peace.